Okay, quick video I wanted to do here to uh, make some clarifications on using the Shining 3D uh, DSEX scanner. So I, I've shown in numerous videos how I'm using this to scan my triple tray impressions and just sending that off to the lab. And so I had a customer that has purchased it. They're trying to do this and their lab was having difficulty doing it. So the lab reported to them, hey, these scans are not what we need. Um, and so he reached out to see how that could be remedied. So uh, let me first show you the scan. So this is what he sent me. Uh, just asked him to send me the last case that he had sent out to the lab. And so if you look at this, you're going to see that the data has not been trimmed real well. And so I would imagine the lab is getting this and they're looking and they, they can't see through this stuff. If I turn on the lower jaw, uh, nothing has been trimmed up in, in this area either. And so as a result, it's just making it difficult for the lab to be able to visualize what they need to uh, because we've got pieces of mesh overlying one another, things like that. So what we want to do is be able to trim that data up more appropriately before it goes off to the lab. So let me do a quick, uh, I'm going to show you just a screen record I did on my other computer. Um, so this is the scanner, obviously sped way up. Uh, the scan time on these triple tray impressions is five to seven minutes or so. So it scanned one side, now it's scanning the opposing. And now you're going to see that the software will stitch these two together. So here is the upper and lower scan stitched. And this is where, uh, you know, the, the problem was for this individual is that from here, you need to now begin uh, trimming this data down. So if you look, I'm going to go down to the little uh, selection line. And then if you hold down shift, you can encircle areas of this uh, that you want to delete and then just push delete on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that all the way around the entire impression because all of that buckle surface, all of these areas where the two uh, models are connected. Those all need to go because otherwise it's going to force your lab to go and edit your data, clean things up. And, and I think that was what his lab was running into is they just found it to be a pain in the butt. So super easy to do within this software. Again, just free selection, hold down the shift key and then left click and encircle and you can delete that. So uh, you can see I'm being careful not to delete actual tooth surfaces, but I'm going to delete every last bit of the rest of it. Okay, so shift, encircle all of that. And now once I do this, you're going to be able to see that these are now two independent models that are not uh, connecting to one another. Okay, so I can look again from the buckle, any of that excess area where uh, this is where I'd cut it with the knife to trim back and give the camera better visualization. I can trim that back. Really, the teeth are the only thing that we need in this model. So trim everything else you possibly can away from that. Just keep the vital data, which is uh, the teeth in their entirety. And then once I push complete here, the software is going to save these two STL models just as you see them right there, which should be something easy for any lab to just pull in and get to work right away in their 3Shape or in their ExoCAD uh, software. So I'm just opening these up in Mesh Mixer. Um, just to show what the scan looks like in an outside program. Um, and once again, the lab ought to be able to do this and import both of them. When they grab the other one, it should already be saved in the proper occlusion, but it doesn't have that excess noise and data around it that's going to obstruct the view. So point of the video, just make sure that you're doing all of your trimming of the data within the Shining 3D software. And if you do that, your lab shouldn't have any problem using this data to fabricate the crowns. Thanks.